What's the story everyone? Welcome back to Gaelic Games Fan TV. How's the form? How is everybody getting on? And in this video, we're going to be taking a look at my 2024 All-Ireland Senior Hurling Championship predictions. The All-Ireland Senior Hurling Championship is officially here. It throws in this weekend and it throws in with a bang, doesn't it? With the fact that Clare are playing Limerick and what a game that proves to be. We won't really be discussing that game too much in this video. There will be a preview out later in the week, which really delves into the Munster Championship games and the Leinster Championship games, which are taking place this weekend. In this video, we're going to be primarily focusing on the All Ireland Senior Hurling Championship. I'm going to be giving my predictions for the Munster Hurling Championship, the Leinster Hurling Championship, the Joe McDonough Cup, and of course the All Ireland Series. We'll also be predicting Hurler of the Year as well, so stay tuned for that one uh, a little bit later on. And yeah, let's get into it. Firstly, if you are new to the channel, if you could hit the like button and subscribe, that will be very much appreciated. I did a football predictions video a couple of weeks ago, if you want to go ahead and check that out. And um, yeah, look, there will be pr plenty more content coming out over the next couple of weeks. Match reactions, we'll be doing weekly previews now for the Hurling Championship and weekly review shows as well. With the fact that, look, the league in Hurling probably isn't too exciting, if I'm being perfectly honest with you. But the Munster Hurling Championship and the Leinster Hurling Championship, in particular, the Munster Hurling Championship it's it's absolutely breathtaking like it's so competitive so many great games it goes down to the war you can't always predict it albeit Limerick are bidding for six in a row it, it's very entertaining stuff and it's definitely probably one of the best competitions we have in the GA right now and speaking of the Munster Hurling Championship that is where we're going to start let's start off by predicting the Munster Senior Hurling Championship. Let's remind ourselves of how the Munster Hurling Championship works. So we have five teams in here. We've Cork, Tipperary, Clare, Limerick and Waterford. And how it works is the top two progress on into the Munster Final and the third place team goes into the preliminary all Ireland Quarter Finals and they will play the winners of the Joe McDonough Cup, which we will get onto a little bit later. So five teams in here, as we discussed before, let's start off by discussing who I think will finish in fifth and that team i've gone for is waterford um look i do like waterford i'm actually a fan of davy fitz i'm probably one of the few people who actually really respect davy fitz and, and what he's brought to hurling in terms of winning the all Ireland with clear leinster title obviously with wexford uh won a munster title with waterford many many years ago as well but to be honest with you, I just don't think it's really clicked, uh, him being at Waterford. And do you know what? I think certain managers suit certain teams. I don't think Davy Fitz suits this Waterford team. Waterford are the type of team that, in my opinion, and we saw this under Liam Cahill, the shackles need to be let off. They need to play proper hurling and get after teams and be on the front foot. And we just haven't really seen that from Waterford under Davy Fitz, unfortunately. They seem very restricted. In the league, they'd one win in five games, and that was against Offaly on the opening day. So they're coming in on the back of four straight defeats. They do have some very good hurlers. I mean, Desi Hutchinson is one of the most skillful hurlers in the country, in my opinion. You've got Stephen Bennett, Jamie Barron, Pat Fitzgerald, and Michael Kiley, two very good young players who've come in in recent years. It just hasn't clicked for the Deutsche. And to be honest with you, it's also down to the fact that like the Munster Hurling Championship is just very, very strong. Like you've got, in my opinion, if you were to do a power rankings of hurling right now, you would probably have the top four in Munster and Kilkenny and Galway in the top six. Do you know that way? Like Waterford, it's very, very hard for Waterford to to do anything right now. And I just think, like obviously, a couple of years ago they you know got to an All Ireland final. I remember in twenty twenty two under Liam Cahill they were being touted as a side that could potentially kick on and, and maybe challenge Limerick. May, a lot of people saw they were, you know, the closest challengers to Limerick, but it just hasn't materialised since then. And um, looking at their fixtures, they've Cork at home, Tip at home, Clare away, Limerick away. Realistically, if they're going to do anything, they need to get something from both Cork and Tip. They beat Tipperary last year, which obviously will give them a huge amount of confidence going into uh, the game, obviously at home. Like, the game against Cork, though, is so crucial because if they can get something from that, if they can win that, they then give themselves a serious chance. I don't think they'll take anything from Clare and Limerick. You know, Clare and Limerick will be hitting their groove by then. You're talking about two of the best teams in the country right now. I just don't think Waterford are at their level as of right now. So, yeah, I'm going to go for Waterford in fifth. Apparently, it feels like it won't be as bad as last year in terms of the performances. But in terms of the outcome, like, I couldn't see them winning more than a game, if I'm being honest. Like... I think it'll be very hard for them to beat both Cork and Tipperary, and I can't see them beating Clare and Limerick. So, 
Yeah, I've gone for Waterford in fifth. Between fourth and first, look, I think it will be very, very close, and it was that way last year. Uh, going into the final round of fixtures, it was a little bit all over the place. And even though Limerick did go on to win the Munster Hurling Championship, at one stage, it looked like they potentially could have missed out entirely even getting through Munster, you know? So it was a little bit bizarre, a little bit mental, and to be fair, I think it's going to be very similar again. Um, I do think Limerick and Clare will be good enough to get to the Munster final, a bit of a spoiler alert. So I think Tipperary and Cork will be the two sides that will be really in the battle for the third place and I think going down to the final minutes let's say of uh, you know the Munster Championship in the round robin stage I think Tipperary and Cork will be the both sides that will be very very close to getting into that third position speaking of Tipperary first of all four wins and two defeats in the league we know some of their star players in Jason Ford and Jake Morris Geroid O'Connor has been absolutely brilliant since coming into the team as well you also have to look at Connor Stakelum Noel McGrath Ronan Marr a fullback has, has been very impressive at times as well their fixtures are Limerick away Waterford away and then Cork and Clare at home uh, obviously as we know this weekend Clare are playing Limerick so Tipperary actually don't play this weekend they actually have a bye week so that's the reason why their first game is against Limerick so interesting enough Limerick will have already played a game by the time Tipperary played them um, it's going to be tough for Tip like you're looking at that opening game against Limerick it probably is a free hit if you can win it happy days but all, all in all, I don't think many people are expecting anything from that game. Albeit, Tipperary and Limerick did draw last year, and that certainly will stand to them. Cork and Clare, though, in the final two games are absolutely huge. Like, maybe Clare are already in a Munster final by then, and they might take their eye off the ball. Cork at home as well, absolutely massive. Because we're speaking of Tipperary and Cork, who I think will be the two sides that will miss out on the Munster final, but will be in the battle going into um, you know the final couple of games to get that third position. And yeah, what a huge game that proves to be. And speaking of Cork, they had a bit of an up and down league. They had three wins and two defeats. Two defeats at the start of the league and uh, obviously then had three wins on the bounce. There are a lot of question marks over Pat Ryan, uh, the Cork manager, in the sense of does he know his best starting 15? There's been so much rotation in Cork's starting forwards, which I think has been one of the common problems with Cork over the last couple of years. Like Cork have almost got so many great forwards that's very hard to put them all together like you've, you've had a huge amount of un underage success huge amount of players coming through great club hurlers established hurlers already in the side as well and trying to find that balance and put them all together it was something that Kieran Kingston couldn't deal with and it's something that Pat Ryan is really dealing with as well in my opinion Alan Connolly's coming in in great form six goals in his last two games you do also have the likes of Jack O'Connor Connor Lahan, Kieran Joyce at centre back has been very impressive Brian Hayes and Seamus Harnady are two players who've uh, stood out from a Cork perspective as well. And of course, Patrick Horgan, you can't go about not mentioning him as well. So yeah, look, there's, there's a lot of question marks over Cork. They certainly have the ability and the talent. They finished fourth in Munster last year. But they were like they only suffered some narrow defeats along the way. It was kind of bizarre. They actually finished with a better score difference than Tipperary. It was it was a very unusual season for Cork, and kind of bizarrely, like many Cork fans felt more positive coming out of the Munster Championship last year than they did when they got battered in the All Ireland final in 2021. And the reason being is because obviously they got battered in that All Ireland final. And to be fair to Cork, there does seem to be progress, but this is a big year for Pat Ryan because I think if they were to miss out and finish fourth again, I think it would just be like for Cork hurling, the history of Cork and everything else, for them to go back to back seasons, not getting out getting out of Munster, I think that would be a bit of a travesty in all honesty. Looking at their fixtures, Waterford away, Clara home, Limerick at home, and Tipperary away. So Cork of a bye week on the final weekend of the Munster Championship. So it makes that game against Tipperary absolutely crucial because it will be Cork's last game I think Cork's fixture list is a little bit difficult um, I think getting Clare and Limerick at home I think you'd nearly rather get them away if I'm being perfectly honest just in the sense that Waterford and Tipperary are your two bankers um, and you want to get them at home and, and you don't want to have them away from home uh, albeit look if Cork beat Waterford they could carry a bit of momentum at home to Clare maybe Cork can push for a Munster, a Munster title and get into a Munster final as I said before Cork were very close to getting into the Munster final last year the gap between a lot of these teams is not that big so again it's probably not improbable that Cork don't push on and get to a Munster final in saying that though I'm going to go for Cork in third and I'm going to go for Tipperary in fourth look I've close connection with Tipperary family from there and everything else so I always 
always root for Tipperary and I certainly will be rooting for them to, to push on. It's probably going to come down to a late winner, a late point. It's going to come down to a draw. It could come down to a result elsewhere. I'm not saying that Cork are necessarily a better team than Tipperary. I just have a feeling Cork are going to just about get over the line. I think there's more potential in Cork in my opinion. And I think for Liam Cahill and Tipperary... Like, Liam Cahill is coming off back-to-back -back seasons, obviously with Tipperary last year, Waterford the season before, where his team didn't get out of the Munster Championship. And I just think there's been murmurings about certain players not being happy behind the scenes, which sometimes you can't really read into. But I just have a funny feeling Cork are going to nick it. So I'm going to say Tipperary forward and Cork in third. Then we move into the top two, which is Clare and Limerick. And this has obviously been the Munster final for the last two seasons. And look, maybe it might be a little bit of a boring prediction to predict these two to get in, into the final again. But I honestly do believe like these are the two best teams in the country. And look, Clare are coming in off the back of obviously winning the, the National Hurling League, which to be fair, has often been a bit of a um, caveat to sides actually struggling in the Munster Championship in the last couple of years. Limerick a little bit last season, Waterford the season before. So it'll be interesting to see how Clare do deal with that in fairness speaking of Clare look they are coming in as league champions with six wins and a draw of course in division one their first league title since 2016 are they the closest to Limerick that is the big question mark um in terms of you've got Kilkenny who are definitely in the conversation as well but I think for Clare like everything that's been happening over the last couple of years with Clare Hurling has very much been building to trying to stop Limerick and look Limerick are bidding for Something that's absolutely historic, like being the first side in Munster Championship history at senior level to win six in a row. And also, of course, as well, being the first team to win five All-Irelands in a row at senior level and hurling. There's so much on the line and it, it's what makes it so fascinating, the Clare and Limerick rivalry. And it's why the games between Clare and Limerick this year are going to, they're going to be like finals and they're going to be so exciting. And games, honestly, we could talk about for years to come. Aidan McCarthy has been Clare's top scorer. He scored 236 this year. Actually, the second top score across Division 1 in the National League. Mark Rogers, Peter Duggan, David Reedy, all players worth mentioning. You have Tony Kelly to come back in, which is absolutely huge. Mad to think Clare won the league without Tony Kelly. You know, for a large part in the last couple of years, you felt like when Tony Kelly wasn't there for Clare, they weren't the same team. And all of a sudden now, they seem to have almost kicked on without him a little bit. But with him coming back in, what an extra addition that is for Clare. And that's what makes them so dangerous. You have Shane O'Donnell coming back in as well. Davy Fitzgerald in midfield is brilliant. John Connell at centre-back is outstanding as well. Their fixtures, Limerick at home, as we very well know this weekend. Cork away, Waterford at home, and then Tip Arary away. It's huge for Clare. And look, to be honest with you, I do fancy Clare to win this weekend. And I actually do fancy them to finish first. Um, I think they're going to carry on their momentum from the league and I think they're going to come out all guns blazing in Ennis and I think they're going to beat Limerick I really do does that mean I think Clare are going to topple Limerick and win the Munster Championship and maybe win the All-Ireland let's see Let, let's carry on our predictions right here and let's discuss Limerick because we all know what a year this could be for Limerick it's a historic year we know what it means and, and personally as a Dublin fan I know what it means obviously not as a player obviously but as a fan I know what it means to win a five in a row I know the emotions that go into it and five in a row and six in a row like they very very rarely ever happen and when it comes to the year where they could happen crazy things tend to happen and you know Dublin might have won that five in a row in football but only by the skin of their teeth do you know what I mean and I do think it could be very similar with Limerick this year and to be fair to Limerick they, they've never walked the Munster Championship they've never walked the All-Ireland there's always been adversity. They've always had to go behind in certain games. They've always maybe lost the odd game here or there. I think because the standards are so high in hurling and because hurling is such a very competitive sport and generally speaking, like you have Limerick as your favourites, but the gap between the likes of Clare, Kilkenny, it isn't really that big. It's just small margins and that's what very often gets Limerick over the line. We know the talent that they have. Aaron Galan, Tom Morrissey, Keane Lynch... Geroid Hegarty, Shamie Flanagan to come back in uh, as well. Obviously, he was missing in that game versus Kilkenny or he came off the bench and you'd imagine he'll be back being a regular starter again. Young players like Adam English, Cahill O'Neill, Dunica O'Dalling have really all established themselves over the last couple of seasons. Sean Finn is now back in the team. Dan Morrissey will come back as well. Cole Hayes is obviously the uh, elephant in the room, which nobody wants to talk about. Will he play? Who knows? But look, I think Limerick... Limerick have proven even when there's big players not available, they tend to kick on anyway. So 
who knows what the situation is going to be with Kyle Hayes. Uh, should he play? Should he not? It's probably not for me to say. And I'm obviously here to discuss the hurling and not what happens off the pitch. Um, so, yeah. but So, ultimately then, I'll go Clare first. I'll go Limerick second. And I'm going Limerick second off of the basis that I think Clare will beat Limerick this weekend. And I think that will prove to be the difference. Limerick and Clare in the Munster final. Uh, interesting enough, another interesting statistic right here. If Limerick do win the Munster Hurling Championship. They'll have won the same amount of Munster Hurling Championship Championships in the last six years as Clare have in their entire history, which is absolutely wild, isn't it? That's just a mental statistic right there. And I'm sure, you know, the Clare lads will be thinking of that. Look, in terms of the, the, the Munster final, we know it will go down to the war. It could go to extra time. There'll probably only be a couple of points in it. But again, Limerick always find a way when the going gets tough. And until they get beat, it's very it, like get beat, and I say get beat, and I know I've predicted them to lose to Clare in the in the championship. But in terms of like a Munster final or a knockout game in the All Ireland series, until they actually lose one of them games, it's very very hard to bet against them because they always find the way. And John Coyley and Paul Connerk, like they're two of the best tacticians in the game when it comes to hurling. They'll spot the things that we can't see. They'll spot the little minute differences that can make a difference on a day, whether it be changing a player's position, bringing a certain player on to make a difference. And I just think Limerick just still will have that edge over Clare, in my opinion. It could only be a point or two. It could really, who knows, maybe even penalties. Maybe we might even get our first um, you know, championship game in hurling going or being decided by a penalty shootout. So it could happen. It really, really could happen. And I do think it will go down to the war. I just think Limerick have that edge. I just think they have that edge. And look, Clare could do it. And if Clare do, do do it, I won't be surprised because I think Clare are certainly the closest team to Limerick in my opinion. But I just think Limerick have that edge and haven't done it in the last two years. I just think Limerick will find the way again. I really do. So we'll go with Limerick to win the Munster Championship then. And we'll get on to how I think they'll do in the all Ireland series and Clare and Cork a little bit later on. But let's look at the Leinster Senior Hurling Championship. Now the Leinster Championship, I think it does go without saying, it's not as entertaining as the as the Munster Championship. I think there is an argument maybe that we should restructure the championship a little bit to try and um, sort of balance things out because you like you look at Galway and Kilkenny who are probably going to breeze to a Leinster final, let's be honest. Although I do think Wexford will certainly be in the conversation this year and we'll get on to them. But generally speaking, like when you have Antrim, Dublin and Carlo in here, like they're three easy wins in my opinion for both Kilkenny and Galway. Like And I'm a Dublin fan and I'm, and I'm being honest, like they're easy wins for those counties. Whereas in Munster, every game is an absolute slog. And you could argue maybe that favours the Munster teams as well because they're playing at a higher level going into the All Ireland series. But at the same time, it means like the likes of Kilkenny don't need to necessarily be at their absolute best until a Leinster final and beyond. So could they restructure the championship a little bit? That's an interesting question and let me know in the comments down below. But in predicting the Leinster championship, we'll go with the side who finishes bottom. And just for people who don't know, the side who does finish bottom of the Leinster Championship gets relegated to the Joe McDonough. And um, for me, there's two sides here that are very obvious, uh, Carlo and Antrim. It will, both be, it, it will be one of them two who do get relegated, uh, in my opinion. Speaking of Carlo, first of all, they're coming in on the back of a surprise defeat in the Division 2A final to Leash. They won the Joe McDonough Cup last year. Um, not many people seen that coming as well, in fairness. But yeah, it was a little bit of a surprise defeat uh, against Leash. They're actually coming in on the back of uh, two defeats. They lost to Kildare in the final round of fixtures uh, in the league as well. Albeit that game didn't matter because Carlo were already in the league final Marty Kavanagh was their top scorer with four goals and 46 points Chris Nolan has also scored a goal and 24 points so he's looked very impressive from a Carlo perspective four wins two defeats um, and looking at their fixtures they've got Galway away Dublin at home Kilkenny home Wexford at home and Antrim away so it really everything really boils down to that final round of fixtures against Antrim can Carlo get anything at home to Dublin? Dublin may be a little bit vulnerable at the moment. Can they get something from Wexford? I, I can't see that either, to be, to be honest with you. So re you're really looking at it for, for both Carlo and Antrim in the sense of, you know, who's going to have the negative score difference, um, the worst negative score difference going into that because whoever doesn't could get a draw and, and stay up. Do you know that way? That's potentially how it could look. So I think the most important thing for Carlo is trying to keep the score down as much as possible. Whilst also, I think the game they will target will be Dublin at home 
But even at that, like I, as a Dublin fan, I think we're very vulnerable right now, and I think we are very beatable. But I don't think we're. I don't think we have it in us to lose to Carlo, and that's. You know, I don't want to be disrespectful to Carlo there. Albeit Carlo did give us a bit of a game in the preliminary quarterfinals last year, but yeah, I think it will be tough for Carlo, let's be honest. And Antrim, five defeats from five in Division 1A, obviously playing at a much higher level than Carlo over the last couple of years. They have lost a lot of their key players um, before the start of this year. Neil McManus is obviously the standout one who retired. Aidan O'Brien, very impressive so far this year. Conal Cunning has been very uh, good as well. Two standout players there. Looking at their fixture list, Kilkenny away, Wexford at home, Dublin away, Galway at home, and then Carlo at home. And I am going to go for Antrim to stay up. I think they'll finish in fifth, and I think Carlo will finish in sixth. And the big reason really... That final game, Antrim are playing Carlo at home in Corrigan Park. And Antrim have been here numerous times in the last couple of years. They beat Westmead on the final day last season. They've been playing at a higher level. And I think Antrim will just have a bit more than Carlo. And to be fair to Antrim as well, recent games against Dublin have been very close. They drew with them last season uh, in the Leinster Championship. And they also um, lost just by a point in Parnell Park earlier in the year as well so Antrim do have it in them to get something against the Dublin maybe get something against the Wexford again I don't really see that happening to be honest but we Antrim are probably more likely to get something from those four games than Carlo are and I do think Antrim will be Carlo as well so yeah we'll go at Antrim in fifth Carlo in sixth in fourth I've gone for Dublin uh, two wins from five games in the league for the Dubs and they both came against Westmead and Antrim, uh, Keno Sullivan is Dublin's top scorer with a goal and 28 points. You've also got players like Donald Burke who's obviously come back in. Um, he, he was out for a large part. He, he was out for the majority of the club season with Nafina um, through injury. So great to see him back. Ronan Hayes, Danny Sutcliffe, uh, Fergal Whiteley are players who've played quite consistently so far for Dublin this year. I think as a Dublin fan, like the part I'm very frustrated with as a Dublin fan, like... Michal Donoghue obviously won an All-Ireland with Galway, very established manager, one of the best um, managers we could have possibly gotten uh, in all honesty, but we just haven't kicked on, we're not progressing and to be fair I don't think it's down to him, I just think it's down to, there obviously doesn't seem to be a huge amount coming through, there doesn't seem to be a huge amount of trust in young players. Like players for me who've stood out in club championships over the last couple of years, Alex Considine, Dara Purcell and AJ Murphy, three of them barely featured at all in the league and that's very disappointing. It seems like a lot, Dublin are sticking with a lot more of the core players over the last couple of years and I just think at the end of the day that hasn't worked. So I think Dublin needs to try something different. We need to try something um, a bit more and... You know, even for Dublin getting into the third place probably doesn't matter because we won't win an All Ireland quarter final. I think Dublin should be trying to push to, to get to the Leinster final because at least then it will be something for the Dublin fans to get excited about. I just don't see a huge amount um, of positivity around Dublin hurling right now. Look, we do have a great record against Wexford. We we beat them last season. We beat them the season before as well. Maybe that might stand to Dublin um, in in the sense of pushing on and, and trying to get to finishing third or, or maybe even a Leinster final. Our record against Kilkenny is absolutely woeful, so let's completely write that one off. Our Wexford against Galway isn't terrible, though, and playing them on the final day, looking at their fixtures, Wexford away, Carlow away, Antrim home, Kilkenny home, Galway away. So maybe, like, you, you look at it and think, if Dublin can get something on the opening day against Wexford, which is going to be so crucial, I think it's really going to boil down to that. If Dublin can win that, You'd, you'd fancy Dublin to be Carlo. You'd fancy Dublin to be Antrim. Maybe it will set something up for Galway, you know, the Galway game on the final day. But I just think personally that Wexford are coming in with a little bit more momentum. I do think Keith Rossiter has Wexford in a much better place than what they were last year. I think Wexford are introducing younger players, which is absolutely huge. They also have key senior players to come back into the side as well. So I just think Wexford are coming in in a slightly better place than Dublin right now, in my opinion. And speaking of Wexford, it is them that I predict to finish in third. One win, three draws and one loss in total in the league, I should say. Seamus Casey has been absolutely outstanding. 326, he's their top scorer in the league. Keane Byrne and Corey Byrne Dunbar, two young players who have come in, have looked very impressive. Lee Chin, Kevin Foley, Connor McDonald, all senior players 
to come back in. Kevin Foley is obviously featured here and there. Their fixtures are Dublin home, Antrim away, Galway home, Carlow away and Kilkenny away. Look, the Dublin home game for Wexford is absolutely huge because Wexford, their record against Dublin in the last couple of years has been quite poor and they need to put that right and... Um, I think if Wexford lose that game then all of a sudden they're playing catch up and look you'd, you'd expect them to be Antrim but then playing Galway at home especially with who Dublin Dublin's fixtures Antrim and Carlo in their next two games you know if Wexford lose to Dublin and then Dublin win their next two games after that Wexford could be four points adrift and the chances of getting into the top three going into the Carlo and Kilkenny game could already be over so I think it's hugely important for Wexford to do something in that opening game versus Dublin and to be fair I do actually fancy them to win that game. In fairness to Wexford, look, they have a lot of good young players coming through. There's a real good feel-good factor around Wexford hurling right now. They only won one game, but they only lost one game in the league. So I do think it's important to, to point that out. Can they sneak into a Leinster final? I don't think they'll be a million miles away because Galway, for me, there's a lot of unknowns about Galway. They're coming in on the back of three wins, a draw and a defeat. I think their league camp campaign overall actually wasn't too bad, in all honesty. But it's a huge campaign for Henry Shefflin. Um, the last two years, back-to-back -back Leinster final defeats, back-to-back All-Ireland semi-final defeats as well. Are Galway going to kick on? Like That is the big, big question right now. And I think for Henry Shefflin, if Galway don't win a Leinster title this year and if they don't progress beyond a Leinster or an All-Ireland semi-final, I don't think Henry Shefflin will be there next year because I think there's... There is also that thing as well that Henry Shefflin at some point is probably going to be involved with Kilkenny, whether that be as a manager or in the backroom staff. And what's he going to do? He's going to take all the information he acquired about Galway and give it straight to Kilkenny. So I think there's an argument that Galway probably need to look elsewhere if things don't go according to plan for Galway and Henry Shefflin. Evan Oyland has been their top scorer this year with 40 points. Connor Whelan will obviously be an integral part for, for Galway uh, in the championship. He won an All-Star last year and I think he's proven uh, he's not a one-trick pony. Tom Monaghan's been in good form. You've got Connor Cooney, Jason Flynn as well. I will be honest though, I'm just not entirely convinced by Galway. I'm really not. I just don't really... Again, like I don't see a lot coming through. Um, they've obviously had a huge amount of success at minor level, at underage level, and they've had a few good under-20 teams. But there just doesn't seem to be a lot there. And generally speaking, I think Galway are very predictable. I think they're very easy to play against. Don't think they have it in them to be the top team, such as Kilkenny, such as Limerick. Um, and they might get to an all Ireland semi-final. It's definitely not improbable. Um but again, I just don't think they have it in them to win an All Ireland and really kick on. And um, I do think Galway are going to flatter to deceive in the championship this year. That's just my opinion. And in first, it is Kilkenny. And looking at their league campaign, they've they're coming in with four wins, one draw, and two defeats. Uh, Owen Cody's been their top scorer, three goals and twenty three points. TJ Reid should obviously be back in the side at some stage. He was missing for the league final. You've got players like Adrian Mullen, Billy Drennan. You've got Hugh Lawler, who's probably one of the best fullbacks in the country. Owen Murphy is arguably one of the best goalkeepers in the country as well. And looking at their fixture list, Antrim home, Galway away, Carlo away, Dublin away, and Wexford at home. So three away games on the bounce between uh, Galway and Dublin. Look, in terms of Kilkenny starting 15 in their squad, they're a match for absolutely anyone. There's absolutely no doubt about it. Their win versus Limerick in the league will really, really stand to them. Like The fact they beat Limerick to the sword comfortably, it will stand to them hugely. And I think it could be a big factor going into later in the year. And like Kilkenny, when they get going, they're a match for absolutely anyone. And we've saw them in the all Ireland final against Limerick in the last two years where... They certainly have laid a glove on Limerick and they've got Limerick they got Limerick worried, you know, during multiple parts of both of those two all Ireland finals. Limerick, as we discussed earlier, just had that edge and had that difference. Um but Kilkenny and Leinster, to be fair, have that edge and have that difference themselves, where they're just able to find a way to get over the line. And that never say die attitude is still very much ingrained uh, in Kilkenny from the Brian Cody era and everything else. I think it will be Kilkenny and Galway in the Leinster final. Again, I wouldn't be surprised if Wexford snuck in ahead of Galway because I do think there is a bit of vulnerability about Galway right now. But I am going to go with Kilkenny and Galway in the final. But I do think it would be more comfortable for Kilkenny in the final this time around than last year. I think Kilkenny will win yet another Leinster championship and it will unfortunately be yet another Leinster final defeat for Henry Shefflin as manager of Galway. 
And yeah, look, I think for Kilkenny, the, the options that they have across their team, the, the panel, the main focus for them is to end that all Ireland drought. That's the main focus without a question, but I do think they will have enough to win the Leinster Championship. So that then leads us on to predictions for the all Ireland series. And you'll see on screen a nice bracket here of how things work in terms of the format of the all Ireland Senior Hurling Championship. So you have your preliminary quarterfinals, which is your third play side in Leinster and they play the Joe McDonough, runner, Joe McDonough Cup runners up you have your third place side in the Munster Championship and they play the Joe McDonough Cup winners you have your quarterfinals then which is the second place side in Munster Championship so the runners up in the Munster Championship final they play the preliminary quarterfinal winner you then have your second place Leinster Championship side and they face the preliminary quarterfinal winner as well one of the other quarterfinal winners then you have your semi-finals which is the Leinster Championships Leinster Champions and the Munster Champions against both of the quarterfinal winners obviously you can't have repeat parents here as well and then of course you have your uh, your all Ireland finals so before we get into predictions for this let's go down to the Joe McDonough and let's make some predictions for the Joe McDonough Cup because as we know, the uh, you know the winners and the runners up do go into the All Ireland series. I think there is an argument maybe they do need to change that because I don't really think it it's working. To be perfectly honest, um, maybe the Joe McDonough Cup winners should, but I don't really think the runners up should. And uh, honestly, that's my opinion. But I'd be curious to know people's opinions and in, in the comments. So reminding ourselves of who is in the Joe McDonough Cup then. So we've got Down, Kerry, Leash, Mead, Offaly and West Mead. Um, so in sixth, I'll go for Mead. One win and four defeats uh, in the league. Podrick O'Hanrahan has been their top scorer with a goal and 33 points. But just looking at it, like maybe they could get something against Kerry, but I can't really see it. Like Their only win actually came against Kildare in the opening day uh, in Division 2A. And obviously Kildare are in the Christie Ring Cup. So I can't really see Mead having enough to, to turn it around. They got relegated from Division 2A as well. Um, it is a tough one for me like they won the Christie Ring Cup last year they'll go into the Christie Ring Cup probably again next year and then they'll probably win it we do have a lot of this in Hurling where this, it's the same teams coming up and down every year and I feel like it is something really that the GA needs to look at but yeah I'll go for Mead in 6th in terms of teams who could maybe get dragged into that relegation scrap you've got Kerry who probably have been on the slide in the last couple of years they've lost a lot of key players and everything else one win and four defeats in Division 2A that win did come against Mead which will stand to them. Morris O'Connor, their top scorer with a goal and 21 points. But um, I think Kerry will do enough to stay in the Joe McDonough Cup, but I think they might just be a, a bit too far off of promotion. In fourth, I've gone for down, uh, two wins, a draw and two losses in Division 2A, so a little bit of a better campaign. Pierce Og McCrickard, outstanding, 46 points from him. He's their top scorer. You've also got Dotty Sands, who finished with six goals, and nine points but again unfortunately for down down do tend to cause the odd upset and the odd shock here or there and they probably are a very veteran side in terms of competing at this level over the last couple of years they haven't been a million miles off of getting to a joe mcdonough cup final they certainly haven't been far off but again the, the three other sides leash offaly and westmead i just think would be a bit too good for down so yeah down and forward and a third i've gone for leash and now leash is an interesting one because they are the side coming in with the best form and to be fair like between Leash, Offaly and Westmead I do think there'll be a gap between them three and the rest of uh, of this division I think these three sides will be the strongest sides in the Joe McDonough Cup and it really you know it'll go down to very very small margins and you really couldn't call it between the three of them in all honesty you could, you could pick out Leash, Offaly or Westmead you could pick out any of them three to win the John McDonough Cup and make an argument for it I think it's um, and look that's what I think makes it great and I think that's what will make the Joe, Mc, Joe McDonough Cup very good this year in my opinion but speaking of Leash anyway six wins one loss in seven games they obviously came up from Division 2A as champions and probably did surprise people a little bit just because uh, look Leash had been playing in the all Ireland series and in Division 1 for a good couple of years consistently and then they had a bit of a free you know free fall really um, and, and last year they couldn't really recover but this year they seem to be back on it Aaron Dunphy goal on 30 points he's their top scorer you've got Tomas Keyes who's looked very good Stephen Picky Mar has been very impressive as well look Leash won't be a million miles off the top two but the reasons why I'll go for both Westmead and Offaly first of all Westmead one win four defeats uh, in Division 1B uh, obviously playing at a much higher level than Leash 
But I just think Westmead have proven they're more than capable against the top sides. Like they beat Wexford last year, you know, had a couple of near misses here and there against other sides. David Williams is actually coming in in phenomenal form. He's the top scorer across uh, the ho- the entirety of the National the National Hurling League. He scored two goals and 44 points in five games, including two 12 of that against Tipperary. And like that's incredibly impressive because when you think about it, Westmead, like a, a struggling side in division one like struggling for, for for scores and everything else being battered more or less week in week out in a lot of the games that they played for david williams to end up as the top scorer like that's an extraordinary achievement in my opinion to do that in a side that's struggling is very very impressive and it tells me that he is probably one of the most underrated hurlers in the country in my opinion they're more than good enough to, to bounce back uh, they beat antrim in division 1b as well so they're more than capable of doing it um, and i think they will get into that john mcdonough cup final look i think offaly will be there as well offaly have certainly shown a, a lot of progress over the last couple of years uh, one draw and four defeats in division 1a Owen cattle their top score with 131 in five games and look offaly have had a good couple of underage players making the breakthrough in the last couple of seasons which i think has been uh, very good from an awfully perspective i think we all want to see them get back up to the all or serious and everything else and yeah i think they have enough quality to get past leash and the other sides in this division to ensure a place in the john mcdonough cup final and in terms of the john mcdonough cup winners then i am going to go for westmead i think they will have a bit too much for awfully i think it'll be very close though it could very well go down to the war as it often has in the john mcdonough and i think westmead will bounce straight back up and win the john mcdonough cup so that then leaves us back to my all ireland series predictions and as we said we have the third place side in leinster playing the runners up in the john mcdonough cup and we have the third place side in munster playing the winners of the john mcdonough cup so according to my predictions that would be offaly versus wexford and westmead versus cork I think, as I said before, these games are just a little bit pointless. Like Cork, I think the last time Cork played Westmead, they beat them by like 40 points. To be fair, I don't think that will happen this time around. I think Westmead have kicked on since then. Um, but again, it probably will be 20 plus, you know, 20, 25. So yeah, Cork and, and, and Wexford to come through. One thing I would say that would be interesting though, like if it was Wexford and Westmead, if Westmead weren't to win the Joe McDonough, like it's kind of bizarre isn't it they'd have a better chance and that's why they need to look at this um a little bit because like westmead have beaten wexford in the last couple of years so they'd actually they'd rather play wexford it, it is a little bit interesting it's definitely something i think the the ga and the hurling review committee and all that crack they need to look at this in my opinion and that then leaves the quarterfinals which will be the munster runners up versus one of the quarterfinal winners and the Leinster runners-up versus one of the quarterfinal winners. There can't be repeat pairings, so that would mean that Clare would play Wexford and Cork would play Galway. Uh, I'll go with Clare to beat Wexford. I think they will be too strong there, and I think Wexford's season will come to an end. Cork versus Galway, as I said before, I haven't been entirely impressed with Galway. I'm going to go for Cork. I'm going to go for Cork to cause the shock there a little bit. I... I, I said it earlier in the year, I'm expecting big things from Cork this year. I'm expecting them to kick on. I think they're a side that really does have the potential to sort of make the make a bit more of a step up. Like we've saw Clare do it in recent seasons, make that step up, go from a side who's a contender to a serious challenger. And I think Cork really do have the potential to do that. And I think this will be the year where they do make that step up. And I think they'll beat Galway and qualify for the semi-finals. So then in the semi-finals, that would leave Limerick versus Cork and Kilkenny versus Clare again we can't have repeat parents so you couldn't have Limerick against Clare as an example um, you could have Cork versus Kilkenny but because Limerick and Clare can't happen it would mean Limerick and Cork and Kilkenny and Clare this will be the end of the journey for Cork though uh, I think Limerick again you know they, they just always find a way in these games and um, again obviously this will be the first time Limerick will have played Cork in Crow Park since that 2021 all Ireland final i don't think it would be the same i don't think limerick would absolutely blow cork out of the water i think cork would make a real game out of this just like they did um when they played limerick in the championship last year and you know i, I don't i couldn't see that happening but i could still see limerick finding a way to to come through and i'd be fairly fairly confident they would they would come through in my opinion kilkenny versus clare that's a big one isn't it uh, three years in a row this is an all Ireland semi-final clare have obviously beaten kilkenny very recently in the munster or in the league final you know you think back to the semi-final last year very very close clare just didn't 
take their chances on the day. The game before that, or the year before that, Kilkenny absolutely blew Clare out of water when Clare were coming in as favourites. Kilkenny have the knack of beating Clare in Crow Park, there's no doubt about that. But I'm going to go for Clare this time around to do it. I think this is now the step up for Clare. If Clare lose the Munster final and then get beaten in an all Ireland semi-final defeat again, like they won the league and everything else, but I don't think you could call the season a success. Do you know what I mean? I don't think you could say it was a successful season. I think Clare now need to at least get to an all Ireland final. Do you know that way? Because like, with the fact that they get to a Munster final and Limerick are there as well, they're going to avoid Limerick until at least a, an all Ireland final. So, I think Clare need to take advantage of that and they need to get to the final. They're more than good enough to do it. And to be fair, I think this time around they will do it. Like you look at it, Kilkenny do have a lot of great a lot of great players, but a lot of their core players probably are aging, probably are getting older, whereas Clare's are very much coming into their prime. So they need to take advantage of that and I think they will. Then it's the all Ireland final and do you know what? Like if if this was the all Ireland final, and I think, you know, I think we all hope it it will be, unless you're a Kilkenny fan or a fan of another county, um, this would, I mean, I feel like time would nearly stop in Limerick and Clare, genuinely. I think it would nearly have to be a national holiday um, because I genuinely don't think anybody in either Limerick or Clare would be doing anything other than either being at this final or watching it. Do you know what I mean? This would be so huge. Like the Limerick to win five in a row against their bitter rivals and Clare to end that, you know, five in a row bid against their bitter, bitter rivals. It's... Do you know, even even the thought of it just makes the hair stand up on the back of my neck. And I'm like, oh, I, I want to go. I want to go there now, like literally. And in terms of a prediction, I do think Limerick will win it. I do think they'll win it. Um, again, though, like I know I've predicted Limerick to win the Munster Championship and, and win the All-Ireland again. Look, maybe it's a boring prediction. And I know some people have said that. It's not a boring prediction because it's literally happened for the last four years. Do you know, like um, in those predictions as well, I, I, I've said it, like it will be close. It will go down to the war. Limerick will probably go behind by four or five points. They'll probably be trailing at half time. They'll probably be trailing going into the final five or six minutes. It might go to a replay. It might go to, you know, beyond that. It might go to extra time. It might go to a couple of replays. I don't really know. Like, this will go down to the war, and I don't think it will be easy for Limerick. I'd be very, very surprised if it was. But what Limerick have is match winners. And again, they have, because they've been here and done it, it makes a difference. And I know this is a Dublin fan because. You know, I saw Dublin on countless occasions against Mayo in all Ireland finals, against Kerry in 2019, where arguably Mayo played better than Dublin in a lot of those finals. Arguably Kerry played better than Dublin in 2019. But Dublin had match winners. They had players. They had management there who've been there and done it. And they're able to make those little small differences that will make a difference. And that's really what separates the great, great teams and good teams. Do you know what I mean? And I think that will be the difference once again in the final. I think Limerick will find something from absolutely nowhere. And it could be Adam English coming off the bench. It could be Cahill O'Neill scoring a winning point. It will be something. And even if Limerick get injuries along the way, I'm very, very certain that they will do it and they will win five in a row in the all Ireland Senior Hurling Championship for the very first time in the competition's history. There you go. So there we go. My All Ireland hurling championship prediction is that Limerick win the All Ireland. Maybe not that not that big of a surprise, but let me know in the comments down below. I would be curious to think who who does is there anyone out there who does back Limerick not to win it? And if if you think they don't win it, tell me why because I would love to. I would love to know. I'd love to be educated on it. Obviously, there are lower tier competitions uh, in hurling as well. You have the Christie Ring, you have the Nicky Rackard, and you have Laurie Markup. Uh, obviously, we don't always get to see these teams uh, or, or these competitions on TV, which is a little bit disappointing. So, uh, Derry, Kildare, London, Sligo, Toronto, and Wicklow are the sides in the Christie Ring. Uh, good graphic here up on the Christie Ring Wikipedia page, actually, which shows... The last time these sides won this competition as well, which is interesting to see. I'll go with Kildare. Look, Kildare, it's probably a bit of a madness that they've ended up back in this competition again. They seem to be very good in the league, but they seem to have really struggled in the Joe McDonnell last year, which was a little bit bizarre. So yeah, Kildare will, will bounce straight back up, in my opinion. I reckon they'll be Derry in the final. That's my uh, prediction there. Nicky Rackard Cup, uh, you've got Armagh, Donegal, Loud, Mayo, Monaghan and Roscommon. Uh, Donegal have come close to this in the last couple of years, Mayo were relegated from the Christie Ring last year. Um, I think it was Mayo and Donegal actually in the final two years ago. Uh, I am going to go for Mayo to win it again. I think they will be Donegal in the final. And in the Laurie Mar, you've got Cavan, 
Fermanagh, Lancashire, Leitrim, Longford and Warwickshire. I would be lying if I said I knew absolutely anything about these teams, which is a damn shame because it would be great to you know see these games on YouTube or Club or something like that, but we just don't get it, unfortunately. And again, that probably is something that the Hurland Review Committee, in my opinion, really do need to look at. Uh, I'll go with Fermanagh to win it. Look, they were relegated from the Nicky Rackard Cup last season. So I reckon they'll win it. Um, Lancashire were beaten in the final last year. Will they get to the final again? Uh, let's go with Cavan. Why not? For Mana to be Cavan in the final. There we go. What are predictions maybe to make? Hurler of the year and young hurler of the year. Hurler of the year, first of all. Very tough one, isn't it? There's a few players that, that really, really spring to mind. And it's it's going to be either a Limerick or a Clare player. I'm very, very certain of that. From a Clare perspective, Aidan McCarthy has been an absolutely brilliant form. He, he's been brilliant. Maybe Tony Kelly coming back in gets in the gets in the conversation from a Limerick perspective you have Aaron Galan who won it last year Keen Lynch will be in the conversation Tom Morrissey mightn't be a million miles off usually it's a different Limerick player every year like in the last couple of years it's been a different Limerick player you wouldn't be surprised if you know someone like Tom Morrissey won it this year and um, maybe Garrod Hegarty picks it up the three players I would look towards Aaron Galan Aidan McCarthy and Keane Lynch I'm very convinced it's one of them three I know Keane Lynch probably didn't have he wasn't involved that much in the league but I just think how good he was in the semi-finals and final of the all Ireland last year it leads me to think he's going to have a very very good championship season for Limerick um, but again that one is a risk so I, I, I think I won't go with Keane Lynch I think it's going to be Aaron Galan again and I know it's a little bit boring maybe to go back to back Hurler of the Year awards and I can't remember the last time it actually happened but getting that brilliant ball played into you um, the, the, you know he's one of the most skillful one of the most technically brilliant hurlers in the country and Limerick in my opinion are going to win the All-Ireland and he's going to be integral in doing it he'll probably be the top scorer in the process as well so yeah, I think Aaron Glan wins Hurler of the Year. Young Hurler of the Year is an interesting one. Mark Rogers won this last year. It's a tough one to call, isn't it? Like, you have Mark Rogers. You, I mean, Kieran Joyce could potentially be in the conversation for, for Cork, maybe. Um, I'm predicting Cork to reach the semi final, so that could very well happen. Um, from a Limerick perspective, could maybe have someone like Adam English or Dunnick O'Dalling, but again, I don't think they'll really play that much for, for Limerick to really get it. So. It's a tough one to call, to be honest. I think two other players that do need to mention, Adam Hogan, also of Clare, and Billy Drennan. I'm torn between our Billy Drennan of Kilkenny and Mark Rogers of Clare. Back-to-back Young Hurler of the Year awards. It could happen. I've obviously predicted Hurler of the Year to happen two years on the bounce. That's a tough one. That is a tough one. Um, but I think Mark Rogers is just an extraordinary form, so it's very hard to go against them. I think I'm going to go for him. I think I'm going to go Mark Rogers, Young Hurler of the Year again. But anyway, there we have it. That very much wraps up the video. So I'm going with Limerick to win one star. I'm going with Kilkenny to win Connacht. What am I saying? Kilkenny to win Leinster and uh, not win Connacht. Um, yeah, don't know what don't know what happened there. Uh, All Ireland. I'm going with Limerick. Hurler of the year. I am going with Aaron Glan. Young hurler of the year. I'm going with Mark Rogers. You could really just copy and paste uh, what happened last year in terms of outcomes. But uh, but look, I do think Hurling probably is very predictable at the moment in my opinion uh john mcdonough cup i'm going with west mead yeah they are my predictions let me know yours in the comments down below if you enjoyed the video hit the like button and subscribe there'll be a preview show out later in the week uh, looking at all the games in this weekend's hurling championship and what a weekend it poses to be so yeah anyone who tuned in hit the like button subscribe and i'll see you all later